we can all learn from Jamie's story uh, and relate to it and hopefully find some resilience in our own life and our own story as well. Thank you so much. Um, take it away, Jamie. All right. Thank you, Ben Sian. Are we good? Yep. All right. You want to share your screen? You want to share your screen? Is it not sharing? Let me try it again. So, Ben Sion, I was at that first meeting or at that first program and um, standing in the back of the room and I listened to it. I went not because it was something I really wanted to do. I went because I was asked to do it by my, uh, by my wife. And uh, I went and I listened. And it's because of this that I'm here tonight. All right, now can you see it? Yep, you're good. All right, fantastic. So who am I? I know a lot of you guys. I'm a husband, I'm a father, I'm a brother and a son, I'm a friend and an employer. I'm a highly regarded expert in my field. I have a pretty successful business. I'm kind, I'm stubborn, I'm a fierce competitor. I love to teach. I'm not scared of speaking in front of people, although I'm absolutely mortified tonight. And like 20% of the population, I fight a daily battle with a general, generalized anxiety disorder and depression. Um, it, was at the, it was at this event in 2019 that I decided to do this. This is what I want you to see. I, I live a great life. I have a beautiful wife. I have great kids. My family lives here in Charlotte. I have a very successful business. Everything looks like it's everything looks like it's in order. When what comes to mind is Colbaceta. But it's not. The one thing I wish you knew is for me or millions of people like me, we have become adept at hiding our worries and our pain, our anxieties, because we don't want to appear weak. We don't want to have the stigma. This is what's really going on inside. On a daily basis, I might feel sad or worried, angry, on edge, out of control, scared, irritable, can't concentrate. I misplace everything. Sleeping is not easy for me. My biggest fear is the failure and being able to un and being unable to provide for my family. I feel like a killjoy, like Eeyore, and it really sucks. I'm lucky though. That's as far as it goes. For others, it can be much worse. They can, they can uh, turn to drugs. They can, um, they can also go down another road um, and feel as if they're not worthy to live. Uh, I, I'm fortunate. I don't, I don't have that. Why do I feel like this? Again, I have generalized anxiety disorder and depression. Um, mom and dad didn't do anything wrong. Um, it's just the way I was made. Um, what is depression to me? It's that feeling of not wanting to get out of bed in the morning. It's the feeling of wanting to retreat from people or being unable to concentrate. Look at these pictures again. I live a pretty great life. I fish, I swim, I, I bike, I hang out with my family, my parents and my sister. They all live here in Charlotte. I have a wonderful Jewish community and a great business. But I also have a chemical imbalance and it causes depression and anxiety. And depression and anxiety does not discriminate. Doesn't matter how smart you are, how much money you have, doesn't matter who you are. It can ruin your life. It can kill you slowly, or it can kill you in many different terrible ways. But for everyone who suffers, there are solutions. And not all solutions will work for everybody, but remember, there are solutions. The journey began when the oldest of my daughter, oldest of my daughters was born. 
I could go on and on about a litany of bad things that happened to me. I could make every excuse in the world, and I did. I blamed everyone in the world but myself. College and law school were not really the easiest thing in the world. I graduated at the bottom of my class. I didn't go to the right schools. Um, I bounced around from law firm to law firm because I couldn't find a job when I came to Charlotte. And when I did finally get a job, I got a nickname from one of my bosses called Chicken Little, which was very embarrassing. Um, but I was always waiting for the other shoe to drop. Something bad was going to happen. And that was until my oldest child was born. And I remember holding her in the, in the delivery room, skin to skin, and I had felt something pure. I had felt something I had not felt in a long time. And that was an unadulterated feeling of not being anxious, of total reliance and love. And I had to have more. I was now on a mission to find and bottle this happiness. It was the first time as an adult that I had felt it and I needed more. I was 33 years old. I had what I thought was a pretty crappy legal career, very little self-confidence professionally, never happy with what I was doing. So I decided to make a change and I sought help. I started seeing a psychologist, started medication. And it was hard and it was embarrassing. And, and for me, there was still a stigma, but it was a start. Fast forward 17 years. Abby is now 17 years old. My other, my other two daughters are 15 and 13. I still am married to my wonderful wife. I have a successful law practice with my partner. So the question is, How'd you kill Chicken Little, Jamie? Well, I didn't. I still get the sensation that the sky is falling. Sometimes every day. Sometimes I can be in the most successful year of my career and still feel like it's falling. But I found a life partner who accepted me for who I was and the baggage I came with. And I found a business partner, the lady in the, in the red, uh, who accepted me for who I am and the baggage that I carry. It wasn't easy for either of them. It's not easy for my kids, but they help me every day. My kids help me every day. And yeah, even as recently as today, I've had a rough day. I'm still scared of failure. I'm worried about breaking the rules or losing my license. But in 2019, something really strange happened to me. And it was right before the You Matter um, event. And it really woke me up. On July 4th of 2019, I got a phone call from my business partner that our office was on fire and I needed to get to the office right away. And this is what was on the news on the left and on the right. That's what was left of my, my data center. And that's what I saw when I drove up. All of a sudden, my biggest fears had come true. I was afraid that I had lost my business. I was afraid that I wasn't gonna be able to support my family. The six minute drive over from home was filled with thoughts of bankruptcy and asset planning and things like that. What is resilience? Resilience is the ability to recover, but it doesn't mean you don't still experience, experience stress, emotional upheaval and suffering. It does not mean you are mentally toughness. What it means is that you are able to work through your emotional pain and your emotional suffering. The fire was the icing on the cake that showed me that I could do it. It's not what got me there, but it's what proved that what I had done had worked. Because we were up and running within two hours. We didn't lose a bit of our data. 
because that anxious part of me um, made me plan ahead. I had a business con continuity plan in place. I had a disaster recovery in, uh, plan in place. And we were, we were the talk of the industry. We were on the cover of the magazines. I've been speaking on this for two years. And it's just odd that me of all people became the poster child for resilience. How'd I get there? First thing, the most important thing was the value of being vulnerable. I was vulnerable with my wife early on, with my kids. That gave me the confidence to be vulnerable with my colleagues and my friends and my family. I owned what I was feeling and I was now able to communicate it. It's hard to say to someone that I'm not sad, I'm not tired, to not make an excuse and just say, you know what? I'm having one of those days that I'm battling with, with depression and I'm sorry, I'm just not, I'm not who, who I wanna be right now. Start with those around you. Start with those who love you. It makes it easier for you to finally admit it to yourself. And once you admit it to yourself and you're vulnerable to yourself, it's a lot easier to heal. I fell back on those things that define me. This is my office. This is where I go to sit every day and do my work. You can see I was actually working on this um, as, as I took this picture. My family, my ethics, and my faith. That's what got me through this. On my wall, that one picture that you see is M.A. Nanili Neely, something that I learned when I was studying for my bar mitzvah. It was hard to learn then, but I, I, it's something that has stuck with me. And it means if I'm not for myself, who's for me? You have to believe in yourself. You have to have compassion for yourself. You have to care about yourself. You're not a bad person because you feel this way. Don't, don't stigmatize yourself. But if I'm only for myself, what am I? You're not going through this alone. Those around you will hurt with you. Those around you care. So as you're, as you're going through your journey, apologize if you hurt somebody's feelings. Explain to them what's going on. And remember that if you hurt yourself, you're going to kill them. And if not now, when? Do it today. Do it now. Every day you do, it's going to make it harder to do it in the future. Right above that is this, is this piece of art. I picked it up in Jerusalem, walking through the, the fifth quarter in the old city. And it's about one of our elders, King Solomon. And I can relate because I've got it all. King Solomon had it all, except for one thing, he could not find happiness. And he unfortunately went out and got the best experts. He tried to do what I did, the doctors and the experts and the magicians. But there was this farmer that kept coming back and he finally handed him a wooden ring, it was rough hewn and it said, Gamzeevo. This too shall pass. That is what helped Solomon find happiness. Guys, our current reality is really tough. You know, 2019 was a horrible year for me with the fire. 2020 was horrible for everybody with the pandemic. When it gets dark and when it gets tough, Rely on the words of our, of our forefathers, whether it's Imi Nanili or Gamzeevo, because this too shall pass. The last thing I did is I sought help on those things that overwhelmed me. I found someone to talk to. Not just one person, though. 
I can talk to my wife. I can talk to my kids. I can talk to my business partner. I can talk to my friends, my parents, my sister. But those people are in the fight with me. Those people are affected by my actions. I found different professionals who I can talk to. Because sometimes you got to give them a break. You've got to give your loved ones a break because it's tough on them too. But the most important thing is to do the hard work. It's one thing to go sit in front of a, of a professional. It's another thing to do the work. It's one thing to take the drugs. It's one thing to do the work. Get help. In wrapping up, I, I don't have much to say other than I have anything and everything in the world that anyone could ask for. My wife, kids, my family, I have endless opportunities. But no matter what I had, I wasn't happy. If you think if you just have this one thing that it's gonna make you happy, it's not gonna happen. You've got to do the hard work. Today, I have more than I've ever had because I have the tools and I have the confidence and I have the resilience to, to bounce back. Eric, when you got up and spoke in front of us two years ago, I was blown away. I was blown away by all four people that got up and shared their story. And I will forever thank you for having the courage to do that. Every day's a new day. Every day I have to do the same hard work. And every day I have to remind myself that this too shall pass. Thank you. Vencio. Thank you so much, Jamie. That was beautiful. Thanks for sharing. And I love the quote uh, from Perkei Avot, especially the part of the Imla Lachshav, if not now, when? I think there was a famous Coke ad that would say, why not you?